Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, I don't actually remember what we did. I think we either came from the Clockwork Sun or the Most Serene Mausoleum. I'm not sure which. But we went down and discovered, or rediscovered, the Parliament. So I know at the least we can pass some laws here, and who knows, there might be some quest-related things that I've forgotten about as well. So let's see what we can do. Do I have a prospect for here? I feel like I'm... Do yeah, the munitions, right? Yes. 360 for that. Oh, a bonus moment of inspiration. That is incredibly valuable right now. The Undersecretary asks probing inexpert questions about the yield, lumens, and decibels of your delivery. I want them to rattle Her Majesty's China, he admits savagely. Oh, these will break him, don't you worry. Oh, they're selling a hell of a lot of tea. Probably gonna buy that before I leave. Okay, the people's perpetual protest. This will reduce your tear. I could definitely use that. Enjoy a scone on the lawn. Nothing can go wrong while enjoying an only slightly stale bun. I think we've done this before, so I won't read that. Yeah. Kinda stale. Aunt has a word with a baker about it. Let's get a port report. Hey, how many port reports do I have? Do I have enough? One, two, three, four. No, just four. So one more and I should be able to continue the signalman's quest. Observe the people's perpetual protest? Sure. Oh, the race. I was supposed to go to the floating parliament within a month. I probably haven't succeeded at that because I was totally ignoring it. That's the the race thing that I got from the... Uh, I forgot the name of the society. Not the Royal Society. It was like a different society or, or something inside of it. But I got it from somewhere there at the Royal Society. Rochester Club? Yeah, Rochester Club. Lord Rochester regards you with bleary-eyed delight. How sensational, he brays with rather more S's than our usual. Jolly glad you made it. Care for a tipple? He shakes his head. Uh, no, you'd best be on your way. He waves you back to your engine, but not before thrusting a few bottles into your arms for the return leg. Gain one supplies. Thank you. Now I have to get back in time. Uh... Does the journal say how long I have? It does not. It just says... Do it within 30 days. I'd have to check the footage to be sure if it's even worth attempting. What if I fail? Like, can I do it again? Or are they just going to be like, nah, you suck. We don't want you. Serve the people's perpetual protest. Let's join the protest this time. I don't think I've ever done that. Let's do that. You scream and tell horse. We've borrowed placards and invent witty slogans that trip off the tongue and are quickly picked up by those around you. The world does not seem a notably better place as a result of all this protesting. Still, even a tiny ripple has the potential to become a tidal wave. You have marginally raised awareness of whatever your cause was. Maybe. <laughs> and a sky story. Enter the House of Commons. How did all this work? Is there anything I can do about the with, the with the first secretary? I remember I asked him a bunch of questions about how this all works. Yeah, just questions. Can't really like do an event with them right now. Explore Parliament. What was all this about? Oh, it just gives you that description that we've already seen. Let's go to my ministerial department. Mm. I think it's time to make a new law. I have one will of the people. Yes, yeah, so I've only done this once before, and I failed at it. Let's try again. It's Monday. The week begins with endless meetings. You're spared the most tedious of them. The loquacious civil servant explains that in matters of government policy, ministers tend to be more of an unfortunate necessity than a boon. The loquacious civil servant consults the latest opinion polls. This is indeed a courageous law, he comments and a tone usually served for a, saved for a particularly unfortunate eulogy. 
So we've already seen this before, but it's been a while, so I wanted to reread it. Every day you get one action to try to boost your bill's political capital. The higher this is, the better its chances of passing at the end of the week. Let's see. 100% chance. 100%, 100%, 100 wow. 100% with all those. Okay. Well, we're the best at uh, veils, so let's conduct a bribery campaign. <laughs> The best part is that it's such accepted corruption, you can put it on expenses. Every MP you approach sniffs bristles and makes it abundantly clear that they cannot be bought, they cannot be influenced, and they cannot be corrupted for a small brown envelope of cash. But a large brown envelope, that's different. My bill has no support. A tenth of Parliament supports my bill. Wait. Wait, what? That... Those two sentences don't agree with each other. It has no support. And then the next one is, it has a tenth of support. Okay. Let's impress the house with my experience. Use up a sky story. Few of the MPs have seen any more of the high wilderness than could be glimpsed through the ex extra thick stained glass of their luxury trains. Just hearing about some of the squirming horrors awaiting in the dark has them reaching for their handkerchiefs. If they weren't listening to you before, they certainly are now. A fifth of Parliament supports my bill. Okay. It's Wednesday. Hmm. So I can continue to spend... things like salon suit gossip and stories and stuff. I feel like this is probably going to be more powerful, maybe. So let's try that. Let's defame my rival with a generous act. There are things you've heard, things you've learned that could cause them trouble. You'll ensure that they cannot be shared further without requiring anything in exchange. I have a third of parliamentary support. As the embers of former blackmail materials drift away, you shake hands and confirm the support of your biggest rival. They had better remember. If I do the same thing twice in a row, is it going to be ineffective? Let's try it. A third of Parliament. That's what it was before, right? Yeah, okay. Don't do the same thing twice in a row. I might have just... sank myself. Hmm. Conduct a survey of the protesters outside. Just under half. That's where I was at before when I failed. Mm, with the help of your attractive staff, scrubbed up and pushed into suits they will never be able to afford, you put the key questions to the protesters outside. No one wants to disappoint the attractive, smiling people in front of them, and you receive the answers your questions demanded. 44% chance of success. <sighs> Vote it down. Find more examples of the will of the people to pass a new law. A cabinet reshuffle. You're transferred to the Empress's Space Registry. Remember, the different departments aren't actually any different. They're literally the same. <laughs> okay, um... Hmm. I think you can't have more than one will of the people at a time. Because at this list, I've been to a lot of these and haven't been able to get a will of the people. So, Kirillin, Lustrum, the Most Serene Mausoleum, and Whirlbury. Well, Most Serene Mausoleum will be the easiest, probably. I think Whirlbury Juxtamare is also in Albion. I just haven't discovered it before or now. I suck at passing laws. I think I have it figured out now, though. Just don't do the same thing twice. Alright, um... Where am I going now? I know where I'm going. First, I'm going to buy all the caddies of dry tea that they have as a bargain. And I guess some supplies? Yeah. And and I want to do the two prospects that I have for the sun. Now that my terror is pretty low, I want to do these two things both because they'll be pretty lucrative and clear out two prospects, which is nice. And also because of the literature one, because I think I mentioned this before, but remember the steward specifically told me do not bring literature for the workers because it will distract them from 
I don't know, praying, singing, something like that. So I want to do that just in case that triggers something special to happen. Uh, which means I'm going to head back to London, but let's make it interesting. Let's head back to London uh, a way that we haven't explored before. So I'll go like mm, counterclockwise, like maybe about here and then go back to London. Oh, shit. A wonder. Did I ever discover a wonder in Albion before? Last time? I don't th think so. Stained glass. Nah, 7% chance, and I'll probably lose a crew if I fail. Search the crew cabins. I'll gain terror in addition to any other discoveries I make. Well, my terror's pretty low, and we're about to hit up a wonder, so. 14%. 19%, so you gain 5%. Gained a savage secret and a charred stovepipe nameplate. In one cabin, a locker has survived vitrification, though its lock has not. It shatters under the impact of your boot. Inside, a personal log, beginning with dull accounts, um, with dull accounts, I think it's supposed to say, of Albion patrols, and descending into raving hymns about savage light and orate hues. You sit on the bunk to read, glass crunches. Beneath the blanket is a shape of shattered glass, about as long as you are tall. <laughs> God. this is going to be one of the wonders. Oh, a giant has fallen. Oh, yes! I did discover this! It's the clock tower. <laughs> All the bats go streaming out. Yeah, is this one of the ones that has an encounter that they added in the update? No. Let's go get that treasure. Yeah, I got my money thing on, right? Yeah. Oh. Whew. Can Tankery cleave to rocks like these? Okay, I couldn't read the rest of it. Bull can Tankery defeat it. Gain sovereigns or spend supplies and try to acquire a caged catch. Oh yeah, absolutely. Take one supplies, that's no problem. 100% chance of success, heck yeah. Is it a parasite? A servant? An apprentice? It's beginning to stir, having sensed the death of its host. Or master? Or teacher? With the aid of your crew, you manage to net the cantankery before it is roused. It struggles, but the net holds long enough for you to wrestle it into more permanent lodgings. It bangs irritably against the bars of its cage.
Oh, that sounds like the storm that speaks. Oh, yes. Place of bleak rocks, rosy mists, and unwanted relics. I am tempted to speak to the storm that speaks. When is a better time than now? My terror is low. I've got plenty of supplies. My ship's in good condition. Plenty of crew. Okay. Adventure! Here we come! Hmm. Mm-mm. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like this. Hmm. I really don't like this. I want to back away. Delany's Frank. Interact? Oh, I can interact with it? Okay. Fucking hell, what is this? <sighs> Here in the eye of the storm, the winds ease. You're ringed by scudding clouds. A pallid radiance illuminates your engine like the ghost of sunlight. Purple lightning threads the storm. The voices on the wind clamor until a grumble of irritable thunder stills them. There's a lot I could do here. Read a word the lightning wrote. The lightning flickers and scrawls. Its after images remind you of the engravings on an otherworldly artifact you discovered on your travels. You will always gain something, but at what cost? 83% chance of success. Unlocked when you do not have searching for sigils. Takes an otherworldly artifact. The storm tolerates you for now. <laughs> hmm. Speak to the storm. I did say that's what I wanted to do, but there's only a 30% chance of success. Lightning flickers in the clouds, shedding gargantuan shadows that tower over your engine. Are there secrets to be learned from the storm? Leave. And if I had some items, I could... Sacrifice souls. Either a jumble of undistinguished souls or a selection of immaculate souls. Uh, so the undistinguished souls, this may allow... Uh, this may allay the storm's wrath... The odds are against you, but you can try as many times as you have souls to offer. Or with the Immaculate Ones, this will always work. Mm -mm. I don't actually need to appease the storm, though, right? Because right now it tolerates me. I'm guessing if I mess up, it won't tolerate me, and then I would need to do one of these things. Let's read a word the lightning wrote. Gained a lot of terror, no surprise. Fixing the artifact to your engine's headlight, you project a complex pattern of light onto the clouds. The lightning answers. A colossal knot of violent, violet light stabs through the sky. A sigil of fire. The thunder roars. Your crew wail and shriek. One stoker's hair bursts into flame. Another clutches at her seared eyes. Oh god, the sigil's meaning is branded into your mind. The erroneous assumption that there will be a tomorrow. When you blink, you see it. When you sleep, you will see it. When you die, you will see it. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure about that, so... I mean, I'm not sure I should have done this. Uh... Someone's hair burst into flames. Someone's eyes have been seared. I'm so sorry. Hmm. What just happened here is going to follow me and plague me till my death. Great. The storm's patience has worn out. If, for some reason, you wish to repeat this event, you will need to return another time. What the fuck happened? Searing Enigma. Nice. 15 Terror. Fair. The Storm That Speaks is uninterested in me. Lost an otherworldly artifact and lost two crew. Am I to assume that the one whose hair burst into flames died? Or is otherwise taken out of commission? The one with the seared eyes, I get. But your hair? Okay. Well, that's enough adventure for now. You fasten your straps, fire the engines, and head back into the winds and thunder and lightning. It actually repels me, by the way. I'm not even going forwards, it's just pushing me. 
Good. I want to be out of there as fast as possible. Whew. Maybe I should get my Christmas sunglasses next time. Five percent tear. That's not too bad. Yeah. All right. I'll bite. Ooh. Damn, they're fast. What gun do you have on your ship? Are you gonna shoot ever? Took him a long time to shoot. Alpian Marauder mangled. Seek unusual items. Barrel of unseasoned hours. horror and something ghastly right next to it. Okay. Great. Ruins stud the sky, the meager remnants of a kingdom that preceded Albion. Whoa, what just spotted me? Oh, oh. Some distance. Did that miss? It's not even bleeding yet, is it? Damn, it's got a lot of damage to go. There we go, now it's bleeding. Serpents in the night again. Someone is playing the violin. <laughs> night music. 
you can hear the sounds of a jig echoing through your locomotive. How no one else is up and raising murder is beyond you. You trace the music to its source, a stoker's cabin. His bunkmate is swaddled in his blankets outside the door, uh, holding his hands over his ears. Captain, please make him stop. Inside, you find your stoker in evening dress with a fiddle under his chin. You recognize the melody. You heard it in Langley Hall. Oh my god. Support the sleepless stoker. No one should be forced from their bunk by such a racket. The fiddler listens impassively to your instruction, and with some dignity stows his instrument back in its case, before stalking back to bed. His bunkmate is profusely grateful. Over the next few nights, various crew complain of hearing fiddling in various parts of the engine, but when you check, the stoker is always quietly asleep. Gain five tear. Try to gain bronze wood. I think I'll get a couple if I do this. Oh, forget that. Recover sheaves of parchment. Gain experience and a moment of inspiration or a vision of the heavens. Vision of the heavens. Ah, I wanted the moment of inspiration. Mm, we've read that before. Like a bunch of butterfly catchers, crew hanging out, just gathering sheaves of paper. Okay, well now that my tear is 54%, it's not so low, but hey, I'm here. Let's go to the horror and the ghastly thing. It is said that the slender denizens that once ruled here never wholly departed. Slender denizens? The messengers? Rubbery men? Holy shit, this is all moving, I just realized. I'm not moving, it's moving. Whoa. Whoa. What is happening here? It's like... All this chromatic aberration. Old cold ruins stand here, the work of a conquered sun. What is this? Time and or space seems wrong here. What is... Th oh god. Right, I think I saw this thing once before, but I didn't go into it because uh, it was scary. The hour of the wolf. Doubts are preying on me. Endure. Gained terror. <laughs> oh, Skyhenge! Right! And they added the ability to interact with it. Okay. You tether your engine to a circle of... Menares? Apparently it's pronounced men here. So, kind of just how it looks. Men here, a tall upright stone of a kind erected in prehistoric times in Western Europe. So in other words, one of the Stonehenge things. The tallest towers over you, the height of three men. You can brush the top of the smallest with your fingers. The rocks are rough, weathered. Far beneath the plain, other vast stone plates turn remorselessly. Here, the megalithic monument is still, but the place feels a kilter. You stumble as if dizzy. I can whisper a sky story to the tallest stone. It's said that the stones are lonely. Aww. Well, I got a million sky stories. But only a 50% chance of success. Mm, I can step inside the ring of stones. Oh, thanks to my barrels of unseasoned hours. Ooh. Well, that sounds nice. No chance of success. I think it's just guaranteed. Stoker's tales say that if you bring an offering of hours to the circle, you'll receive gifts in return. Sudden snowflakes snag on your eyelashes. The snow is not falling, frozen in place. You cut a tunnel through. Behind you is a moor, blanketed in white. There are no men here in sight. Before you is a slab of stone, lit by a final slant of winter sunlight. Around the slab is a gathering of tall beings. Their heads and necks are as long and sinuous as swans, rising from the narrow collars of their white feathered robes. 
gift a barrel of hours to the beings that live between seconds. This is what the stories say they desire, after all. Aloof, lonely. The beings consider you, but say nothing. They wait. Your crew lift the barrel of hours onto the stone slab. A stoker prizes the lid off. As a geo tumbles out, there is a flurry of motion. The translucent beings cluster around the barrel, gathering up the geodes with boneless limbs. They pass them out, cradling each one gently. One being spills a shimmer of bright gemstones, their color riotous in this white place, into your arms. The others begin to croon softly to the hours. I don't think we've ever encountered these beings before. They don't sound anything like the curators. Translucent and white and kind of boneless. And I guess, I guess they absolutely love ours. They cherish them, which makes some sense because they're apparently the beings that live between seconds and this whole place obviously has messed up time. Gain a vision of the heavens and a cask of Novartine gemstones. That is all I can do for now. Return to my engine. The creatures are entirely occupied with the hours. They have nothing more for you. The tunnel you cut through the unfalling snowflakes leads you out. The closer you get to where the stones should be, the more the air thickens, until it feels like fording a river. Abruptly, you're on the other side. Fortunately, your engine is here to greet you. A navigator hurries to meet you, obviously concerned. Whatever the date should be, it is not. Not the date that it was. Well, I'm pretty sure we're not going to meet 30 days for the race. Whisper a sky story to the tallest stone... Your failure. Just a story for the stones. You lean close to the cold rock and tell a story to a hollow in the stone. Nearby, your crew watch, clearly unsettled by the superstition. Your tale is finished. You pull yourself from the menhir. The air hangs still. Nothing. Perhaps the stones have heard that story before. Okay, so not really anything bad happens other than you've used your sky story. There's something kind of, I don't know, nice? Maybe even kind of funny about telling a story to a stone and it just doesn't react at all? I mean, I just told a story to a stone. Hmm. Let's leave. What is this ghastly thing? Oh. Man, the game's getting super choppy. Is a weft a harmless side effect or a warning, the devil smirks? I assume London ignores it either way. Duh. Should I go into it? God, I want to go into one and see what happens, but nah, my terror is so freaking high. Ah, whatever. A weft of unraveling time. <laughs> You've strayed into a place where the weave of time has frayed. The sky groans. The borders that separate past and future crumble and your engine is dragged in. So either allow myself to be pulled in. Or command your crew to escape the weft. Hmm. Allow myself to be pulled in. You will not emerge unchanged. Let's note the date, 7th of May. The sky boils. The boiler rumbles, the chimneys spume. You urge your locomotive forward into the churn of time. The present quivers, falters, and is torn away. The horological office in London may be able to tell you more about your encounter. Oh. So I guess I had to experience one to kind of learn more about them talk with the horological office about it. 
Within the weft, past and future not like dueling pythons. Nothing is constant. Another age washes over your locomotive and everything changes. When you leave the weft, some of your present circumstances will follow you out. Be careful when you depart. Hmm. Um, so I can either escape the days of innocence or just remain here until I guess we'll get another, another offer. <laughs> Something else. Um, escape the days of innocence. This is an hour from the recent past. The captain's log is open on the arm of your chair. You've just written the date of a recent departure from port. The manifest shows your stores, healthy with fuel and supplies. The crew chatter cheerfully. They do not know what awaits them. Am I literally going to go back in time to like when I left the last port? Huh. You'll gain fuel and supplies and lose sky stories and experience. Ooh, I don't know if I want to lose experience. I do have a 94% chance of success though. Hmm. Let's remain in the weft. Perhaps if you tolerate this current present a while longer, or hide from it or pray, it will pass. Perhaps another time will replace it. Perhaps you'll like that time better. Gain a little terror. You have only to endure, and the chaos of the weft will sweep your current circumstances away as another time gains dominance. You can feel its approach, a roaring like a gathering tide. The longer you're in the weft, the easier it is to leave, but the more serious the effects may be. Ooh. Escape days yet to come. Perhaps this is a near future. Your engine looks the same. There are familiar faces among your crew. But here, beside the captain's chair, is a logbook more thumbed than your own. You cannot resist pursuing the... perusing the accounts of journeys you have yet to make. It is not comforting reading. If you escape, you will gain experience, terror, and tales of terror. Hmm. The terror worries me because I have 69. Nice. 69%. But more serious of side effects. Plus, I've just rolled the two things that require the skills that I'm really good at. Veils and mirror. Anything after this is just downhill. Let's do it. 69 to 78. Okay, not terrible. Whoa, gain 2,700 experience. You instruct the crew to change course. They're confused but obey. A few minutes later, you emerge from the weft. The near future that you occupied runs aground on the present like a smuggler's dinghy on a sandbar. You're free, in body at least, but your thoughts return to the logbook and the travails you now know you will have to face. Two tales of terror, gained nine terror, and it's not the date that it was. 7th of May? Wasn't it the 7th of May or was it the 6th of May? Anyway. That was very interesting, also scary. God, I do not have the guts to like, keep writing the, the time wave all the way down and see how serious the effects get. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I think I'm going to make pretty much a beeline for London. I'm going to have to visit the mausoleum and, uh... And I forgot what it was called, but we can, like, look at a crypt? Or... Something involving a crypt? And reduce our terror by a lot? I think we required some specimens or something? We should be able to do it. I'm definitely going to need some serious terror reduction. What is this?
thought it looked kind of like a port. I guess... No, I guess we're just kind of close enough to London for the buildings to start appearing. Oh, hello. I need to get some distance. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn. Six percent terror. We're about to get that disturbing music. Read the hold. Lacquer trinket box. A moment of inspiration. Yes. A filigreed mirror has been stored aside. Something moves as you look into its silver depths. The air is briefly filled with the sound of cicadas, the pouring of water, the hiss of a snake. Okay, if I encounter another one, I'm not gonna fight it. I need to get to port. comes the creepy music in a second. There it is. This is a very interesting little district with all this... All these electric lights? I never saw that before. Could be new in the update. Or maybe I just never found it. Very narrow. I guess I can cut at this point, but I'm so close to the station. Plus, we don't get to hear this music very often. Down to 67, still very, very high. All right, well, I think this is a good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, hmm, I think I'm going to take a stop at the Most Serene Mausoleum to reduce our tear, just a quick one, and then probably pop over to the Clockwork Sun to finish those two prospects. 